I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is Hyundai's first proper N SUV, the 2022 Kona N. As you have probably noticed, there's been quite a lot of N models coming in the last few months, and this is only the third one for the year. We still have the i30 sedan N to come in a few weeks, but this is the first time it's been applied to an SUV, even though it's very closely related to the i30N hatchback. The thing about the Kona N though is that now that we have this proper performance model, if you look at the Kona range, it's actually really broad. It starts at a grey bumpered two litre renter special, goes up to a really good EV version, and now we have this version, which feels completely unrelated to the regular facelifted Kona range, and for that we can only be thankful. Helping the Kona N's cause is that it's based on the midlife facelift of the Kona, so it's a lot less unfortunate looking at the front. And in this particular spec, I think it looks really good. This is the first Kona to have performance blue paint because it's a genuine N product, but it also offers matte gold which sounds weird, but looks really good. It's only a thousand dollar option. There are seven colors, two of which are gray, which is no surprise. The rest of the Kona N is pretty tastefully decorated, I think. We have gloss black mirror caps matching the gloss black spoiler at the back. We have matte black around the window frames that matches the matte black along the roof rails. We've also got a little matte black fillet in along this side skirt here with a bit of red piping under it. And then all that requisite color coding around this little end section here around the wheel arches and that sort of stuff. Underneath the back end, we also have multi-link independent rear suspension. So no torsion beams on this version. It is the full proper version. The normal all wheel drive Kona gets multi-link, but the front drive is a torsion beam. So this is a step up to I30N level. The body has also been strengthened in the car. I don't know by how much, but Hyundai says A, B and C pillars have all been strengthened with more welds. And underneath the floor, we've had additional structures added to make the Kona N have a stronger, more rigid basis for the suspension to do its best work. And at the back here, it's probably the Kona N at its most fussy. It does have a lot of lighting going on. We have the LED tail lights, we've got the brake lights, we've got the blinkers this way, we've got the reversing light there, a re reflector there, fog light there, triangle here. It's a lot of stuff, but I suppose it does make it look identifiably not a regular Kona. But the thing that really does that obviously is these two massive rear pipes. And thankfully, oh, and also this lovely matte black rear diffuser. I don't know whether it actually works, but it looks nice, so that's important. The exhaust, they bark like an i20ns, like an i30ns, somewhere in between the two actually, and that's what makes this sort of car more appealing than just a normal 1.6 turbo. In the boot here, we have the same as what the i20n has, which is a standard cargo net. It's pretty spacious, it's 316 litres underneath the floor, is a space saver spare below this little sort of polystyrene tray that's for, I don't know, maybe salad and nibblies at a barbecue, I'm guessing. The back seat does that completely flat. Other than that in here, there's just one tie down hook and one subwoofer. There are two Kona N models in Australia. There's the regular Kona N, that's $47,500 before on-road costs. And there's the Kona N Premium, which is what we're in here, which is $50,500. Now, I reckon that the Kona N Premium is really good value given the stuff you get over the standard car just for three grand. You get fan-cooled and heated seats. You get a heated steering wheel. You get this leather and suede upholstery here, which is really nice. You get 10-way electric adjustment for the driver's seat, eight-way for the passenger seat. You get this fairly modestly sized sunroof, but it is a sunroof. And you get a head-up display. So that all seems pretty good for three grand in my opinion. The rest of the interior is shared, and I suppose there's nothing really wrong with having manual cloth seats because the cloth on the normal one is fine. This steering wheel is great, as it is in all N models with the N and N custom little paddles here, the N grin shift there, the normal gear paddles there. We have a manual handbrake, as every N model does, so go for your life when you're on your grandparents' farm. Uh, this shifter here is also N with the performance blue line through the middle here. 
Uh, there's pretty good storage in the Kona as well. Unlike normal passenger Hyundais, you can fit this one litre bottle easily into the front doors, which is pretty good. I've noticed we also have alloy pedals down here, which is pretty classy. In the centre here, a pair of cup holders. A reasonably well padded armrest, though it doesn't slide with a little bin there. We've got another little hidden shelf under here. And then we've got a shelf in front of it, which is for the wireless charging. So the stereo is a Harman Kardon system. It has eight speakers. It has two USB ports and a 12 volt thing down here. And it sounds really strong. As you'd imagine in a car that's as chubby and as quick as this, you'd want the stereo to have similar meat. And it does. The rest of the interior is inherited from the normal Kona, which means that it's not at the upper end of Hyundai's design, but I think it does a reasonable job of making that better. This panel across here is actually squidgy, which I wasn't expecting, which is kind of nice because it's all just a sea of matte charcoal everywhere. I do like the eyeball vents at the end of the dash. They're always cool in everything. This 10.25 inch screen, which came with the update of the Kona, has this cool piano black surround. It has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It also has the end mode thing, which I'll show when we're out on the track driving the car, which is unique to this model. We have another digital screen in here, which changes all the dials, has that sort of Audi RS inspired dial when you're in end mode, like the i20N, which is also really cool. And finally, we have the driving position in the Kona N. You sit noticeably higher in this than you do in the other hatchbacks, but you still feel like you're part of the vehicle because these seats are so huggy and you're sort of sitting down and in the car, but you're clearly that much higher than a normal passenger car on the road. One of the best things about every Kona, not just the Kona N, is that it's kind of like a Mazda CX-3 expanded by about 30%. And so in the back here, we get all the good things that the Kona N brings, like this suede trim and the leather and all that that the N Premium has, but we also have the utility of the normal car. So I'm sitting slightly higher than the front. I've got a really good view around these awesome seats in the front here. They've got these cool little netted map pockets at the back to add a little bit of visual difference and sort of take your mind away from the fact that the plastics in here are total Econobox. So that means just hard doors, you know, Seams around here, there's one USB port, but no air vents. Yeah, seam there, that sort of stuff. The doors only take like a Red Bull or a 600 mil water bottle, but you know, as long as the seat comfort's fine, that's what's important. This position though is crap. So it's really just a four seater. This car does have a set of armrest here that sits nice and high and has two more cup holders here. So in this position at least, and that one as well, the Kona N is really good. The combined fuel consumption figure for the Hyundai Kona N is 9 litres per 100 kilometres. However, we averaged 11.1 .1 litres per 100 kilometres over some pretty hard driving. The warranty for the car is 5 years or unlimited kilometres, and the scheduled servicing is every 12 months or 10,000 kilometres, totaling $1,675 over 5 years or 50,000 kilometres. Over the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer paid $813 to comprehensively insure a new Hyundai Kona. However, everybody's situation is different and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account like your driving history, where you live and whether you garage your car. The most obvious compromise about the Kona N is that it's like a hatchback on stilts. So it's like an i30N in high heels, which is fine. It looks good. It still does a really good job. In fact, around Wakefield Park here where we're at right now, the Kona N is quick and in the top setting of its suspension, which has three settings because it does have adaptive dampers like the i30N, it's really balanced. The electronic limited slip diff at the front does a really good job of putting power down and it's chuckable. About the only thing that really lets it down when you're hammering the absolute tyres of it is the brakes. Even though they've grown so much over a normal Kona, they just don't quite have that sort of unrelenting uh, endurance to be able to handle just being hammered time and time again. A one, once you've done one fast hot lap, second lap around, you notice there's a lot more travel in the pedal and the brakes just don't quite stand up as much as, say, you would hope the handling would. Uh, on the road, the Kona N is still really quick. The adaptive dampers do give it a greater level of comfort. 
in normal, it's actually really quite livable, even though it's on 19 inch wheels and is a really firmly suspended car, yet still handles really well because the balance and the body control of this car are really good. But I think you kind of need to have more than that. Like having the engine quiet, having the steering in one and all that stuff is fine, but I think that the ultimate setting in the Kona end, and it's something you can access pretty easily, you just have the end mode on the screen like I do here, and you have all of the parameters engine, steering, suspension, transmission, ELSD, ESC and exhaust sound are right there and you can just flick up and down with what you've got there. I feel like the prime setting is probably having everything amped, having steering in two and having damping in two, but which you can also access by hitting N on the steering wheel. But I will say that the steering around straight ahead just doesn't have the connection of what an i20 and does or even an i30 and it's just a little bit vague and at times you kind of question where the front end is in the car it's sort of it's just not quite as switched on as you'd like it to be yet the more lock you put on the car and the more you lean on the front end of the Kona N the better it gets people have questioned why the Kona N is an all-wheel drive but I would say that if that's all about weight saving then too bad front wheel drive is more than enough with this car. That electronic diff does a really good job of apportioning power at the front end. Those Pirelli tyres that it's wearing are also excellent and give it fantastic grip. The engine is strong enough to give it 5.5 seconds 0 to 100, admittedly using launch control, but it doesn't scrabble for grip even when you just flatten it anywhere. It's actually really good. The engine is 206 kilowatts from 5,500 to 6,000 RPM and the torque is 392 newton meters from 2100 to 4700 rpm so it is all about flat output response tied to an eight speed wet clutch dct which is hyundai's own which is also excellent there are three n modes in the car one of which is n grin shift which you access by a little red button here that says ngs on the steering wheel which amps the power to overboost to 213 kilowatts for a period of 20 seconds and counts it down in the instrument pack on the right. It also amps the shift time, it amps the transmission response, and it just sort of gets everything ready for a max attack, which doesn't really make a huge difference to be honest, but who cares? It's still there and this thing goes hard. The second end mode is end track sense that not only senses you're at the track, because you know when you enter Wakefield Park, it already brings up on the little track mode thing in this car, welcome to Wakefield Park. It also amps the transmission response and all the shift mapping to mean it's using maximum of attack. Like it is downshifting when it needs to into corners under hard braking and really just removes the fact that you need to flap around on these paddles here with eight gears. The Kona N does a good enough job on its own. The third is N power shift, which is just about shift timing. I think that there could be a bit more blurting from the exhaust in this car. It's probably not as gratuitous as it can be in an i30N, but that N power shift does mean it really hits home gear changes. This Kona N never doesn't feel quick. The attraction about the Kona N though is that it's a small SUV and a high performance small SUV. So if you want to sit up higher on the road than everybody else, which is not everyone because people buy Land Cruisers, but in this car you do sit noticeably taller than in an i30N and yet you're also on a 50 millimeter shorter wheelbase. So it combines quite an impressive level of height with a similar level of performance and sound. Still really good dynamics, but also really great change of direction with that 50 millimeter shorter wheelbase. It just makes it kind of all work. I just wish it had the steering of the i20N and then this car would be truly great. If you're a purist, you probably wouldn't be looking at a Kona N. You'd be looking at an i30N or an i20N or the forthcoming sedan N with its new platform. Probably not this. But having that choice of having an SUV, something that's easy to get in and out of, something that's a little bit oh, cooler, I suppose, for some people, then the Kona N really hits home because that's the only high performance small SUV you can buy, certainly until something like the Cupra Ateca or whatever come in 12 months time in Australia. But that's, like I said, 12 months away. So for now, the Kona N is it. And obviously people kind of think the same thing. There's only 110 coming to Australia in 2021 and there's 250 names down next to the Kona N. So clearly 
Demand is outstripping supply, something that will probably be fixed in 2022. But in the meantime, if you buy one of these, certainly in matte gold, then you've got quite a unique, a fun and rewarding performance SUV, even if it isn't as driver focused as its other N badge relatives. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell and leave a comment on this, the 2022 Hyundai Kona N or on chasing cars. Thanks for watching.